Okay, so now I've got over here, I've got my um, pirate ship and it's moving over the course of time. So if I want to view what it's doing, then I can just go ahead and drag the playhead through my scene. Um, and that's going to show me what's happening on that scene. Now, what I can do with my rough is I can either turn the rough off or I can delete it entirely. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and then, so another thing that's kind of an important concept about when you're working with uh, Storyboard Pro 3D or when you're working in general with two-dimensional and three-dimensional elements together is that you probably want to um, organize things so that you've got the two-dimensional layers at the appropriate depth uh, in relation to those three-dimensional layers. So let me go back to my library and I'll drag back in my pirate ship. And when you're using your uh, 3D objects here and you're dragging them in from the library, it's actually just referencing your original 3D object. So you don't have to worry about your file size getting very large. It's not copying um, your 3D object. It's simply referencing it. So um, let's do something like this. I'll, I'll scale it up a little bit. And um, dragging on this outside rectangle will scale uniformly the entire ship. And then I kind of want to do something where I can see my character um, on the railing, standing on the railing. So maybe I'll make it, in fact, a little bit smaller like that and um, like so. So if you want to see also a mask of what that frame looks like uh, without seeing all the extra stuff around it, that's a good idea to take a look at that every now and again because um, sometimes it does look like you're getting distortion outside of your camera frame, but of course it will not be distorted in your camera frame. So as long as it looks good within your camera frame, then you're okay. So let me turn that back off again. And um, I'll go ahead and turn off my uh, rough layer as well. And I'm just going to do another kind of a little bit of a rough layer here. I'll do it in, in pink so it's really obvious uh, where my character is. And I'll just draw like a small version of my character here. And as I draw, by the way, I can resize my brush on the fly by holding down the O key and then clicking and dragging, which is a kind of handy thing to do. So let's say that I've got my character standing there. Um, now, as you notice, as I'm drawing here, it's actually popping uh, the, the layer be behind my 3D model. And the reason that it's doing that is if I take a look over here in my top view, um, if I look at the position of these elements, my two-dimensional element is actually behind my whole 3D object. So I probably want to go ahead and take my transform tool and move the position of my uh, character to be um, somewhere on the deck so that it actually makes sense where he is. And then I will also um, change him, his vertical distance, and I can resize him now um, to uh, go to the correct size. And maybe I just want to put the pivot point for him in the center um, of his body to make it easier for me to resize things. And now that I've got him kind of in the right spot, I can just finish up that drawing. It's going to be easier for me to do the drawing when I can see them. Or you can just temporarily hide your um, three-dimensional layer as well. And notice that when you position your, th your two-dimensional layer in the, in the right spot, it's really cool because it will put part of the um, two-dimensional layer behind the model and part of it in front so that you, can, you actually have an interaction between the 2D layer and the 3D layer. So that's some of the main concepts that I wanted to show with this example. I will just go ahead and open up a um, completed um, version of that project to show you guys um, how I kind of wanted it to, to look by the end of it. So let's go into my um, example demo here and um, see if there's anything that I forgot to tell you. So, um, oh yeah, one of the other things that I did on this first panel here in this example was not only did I um, actually animate the position of the ship, but I also put two different drawing layers, one that's representing some waves that will be behind my um, my ship, and one that's representing waves that is going to be in front. And I did those waves a slightly different color just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And you can see how if you have those two layers interacting with each other, you actually get kind of a cool looking little preview, and it's very easy to do that. Um, so now let's take a look at the second panel. Oh, I did a camera move. That's what I did. So um, one of the things that we didn't talk about yet was doing camera moves. And um, so I just put my character here on my, on my ship. But the other thing that I did was I added a camera move. So let me um, go here and I will just uh, remove my camera move so I can do it again. And I will add a keyframe at the beginning of the panel and at the end of the panel. And um, in this version of Storyboard Pro, we have 
a, um, a static camera that's very similar to the, the camera that you would have worked with in uh, Storyboard Pro 2. And so that means that I can adjust, for example, the, um, the zoom level, and I can animate the position of my camera, and I can rotate my camera in this direction but we can't actually yet move the position of the camera and that is one of those for example like I can't move it from my top view and I can't rotate it in this direction but that's one of those developments that we are looking at doing uh, very shortly so stay tuned for that development um, in the future but for now you can see how even with a very simple camera move I can already get a really good sense of uh, three-dimensional movement and I can see my character layer um, interacting with everything and um, so one thing to be aware of also is every time you do a flying camera movement, so for example a movement where the camera is moving and rotating as it's moving, um, it becomes very costly to produce. So it's actually a good idea to try to restrict yourself um, to only do moves that are like uh, pans and rotates so that and zooms so that you're not um, increasing the cost of your production by doing uh, a lot of moves that will be very costly to actually perform. So, um, and then the last thing I did here on the end was I have um, another panel that I flushed out a little bit more what I wanted my character to look like there. And so here's the a rough layer and then on top of that I did my clean layer. And when you're done with your rough layer you can delete the rough layer directly from your project so that you don't um, see what's going on there.